Bankham, Lucas Monroe. After his senior campaign where he helped Everton get a top 25 ranking while eclipsing the thousand point mark. Me, I call him Mr. Ivy League because he gets it done in the classroom and he gets it done on the court. That sound like a package deal to me. Welcome to Beyond the Game, where we go in depth with our players on their process of growth to reach the pinnacle of their success. Today, we got no other than Pin Commit, Lucas Monroe. Show me what you got, Lucas. Welcome to Beyond the Game. Appreciate you for coming to sit down with us, bro. No I appreciate it. Yeah, no Not a lot of people know about Lucas Monroe and all the things you've been through and your, your personality and stuff like that. Not a lot of people know superstition is a part of your preparation. What do you have to do before every, every game to get ready, mentally ready for the, each game? Uh, I'm, I'm real superstitious. I, before every game, I'd eat the same thing. I'd eat uh, chicken, Caesar wrap from Wawa with like some apple slices, some kind of fruit, something like that. Uh, I always got to put on my socks a certain way, my shoes a certain way. I got to tie my left shoe first before my right shoe. Um, anytime I, like I, any kind of thought that like uh, they could be jinxed, I got to knock on wood, something like that. Yeah. I, I do like a lot of little small things like that. Um, I always go into the locker room at a certain time. I always bring a book with me. I read during um, the game when we're reading for our game, stuff like that. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned you reading because I that's the next point I wanted to jump on. Not a lot of people know that your hobby is reading as well. I want to read this quote. Your words. This is your words to live by. Um, from an article that Suburban One Sports did on you. You are what you repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, it's a habit by Aristotle. What does this quote mean to you? And how has this quote, you know, helped your life and helped your career over the years? Uh, I probably heard that when I was like nine or 10. Um, and it kind of just resonated with me. You know, I like, it just made sense. You know, like if you're repeatedly good to people or kind to people and you know, you always work hard, um, you know, good things happen. And, you, you know, you can't be a hard worker once in a while because you're not going to get anything done like that. You know, you got to always push and you got to always do your best to accomplish, you know, you know, get the best out of yourself, reach your potential. And um, so it just made sense to me, you know. So I just, I always try to live like that. I always try to be good to people. I always try to be respectful to people and, and work as hard as I can, you know. And it's, so far, it's, it's helped me out a lot. What you read and what lessons have you took from the game that you applied lessons that you took from reading that you applied to the game uh i read a lot of stuff about kobe i, wa I watch a lot of like interviews yeah, and uh he's my favorite player I, I think he's just he's just one of the greatest minds and greatest athletes you know i think that's ever lived um just the way he approaches the game you know i love it and uh i, I like to read stories about his his work ethic and stuff like that because he you know he would wake up at four in the morning you know work out for a couple hours go home come back work out again go home come back work out again he would get multiple workouts in and and you know one of like the coolest stories i ever heard was he was just he talked about how like if he wakes up at four and someone else is waking up at eight he's getting two more workouts in and you know over the course of a couple of years there's no way you're catching up to him because he's just put in so much more work so that kind of inspired me so you know all my senior year before the season started i would wake up at like 5 15 around i'd come into school work out for like an hour um shower go to my class come back after school work out lift go home, eat, do homework, go back and, you know, shoot again. And, you know, he kind of inspired me, like, you know, if he could do that, I was like, why can't I do it, you know? How, how hard was you, how hard was that implementing that type of scheduling, waking up at 5 a.m.? Was that adjustment hard for you, or, or was it something that just was just so easy to make that adjustment? Uh, it was actually, it was pretty exciting. I, it wasn't hard. You know, I'd be tired, but I was also, like, I know no one else is up right now, so... I know people are sleeping, so I'm catching up to someone or I'm creating more space between me and someone else. So uh, it was kind of more of an exciting, um, intriguing thought to me as opposed to like, damn, I got to wake up and work out. You know, right. it, it was cool because, you know, I, I thought I was making myself better. So. And that just, tell, that just shows how much you love the game. But let me flip the script on you. What, have, what has the game taught you? It's hard work. You know, just like we were just saying, um, you know, you can't can't go halfway and expect to get results you know um if you want to be extraordinary you have to do extraordinary things you know so like you can't you know half-ass it and and expect to get you know the best out of yourself so uh, basketball's taught me to really just go all out and if you want to do something you got to do it all the way through um it's also obviously taught me to work with people and and how to lead people you know i've been a captain um since right. my sophomore year um so like i from a young age i've been you know kind of leading guys even older guys 
Uh, so it's taught me how to be a leader and how to talk to different people, you know, because you can't talk to one guy the same way you talk to another guy. You know, little things like that that have, you know, really helped me become just a better person, a better man, I think. Okay. When I think of Lucas Monroe, one word I think of is versatility because you're not only a good athlete, you're a good student as well. How hard was it balancing, you know, both being good at both with time management and other stuff that just happened in, you know, in your life? Uh, it, it's been tough, but it's, um, it, it's been tough to manage the time, but it hasn't been tough to make myself actually, you know, do the things because I've never been much of a partier. Right. Um, so, you know, while other kids, you know, my age are out, you know, doing their thing, having fun, partying and stuff, you know, I would be in the gym um, because I had to get my schoolwork done and then I could go and hoop and play ball. Um, so like Friday nights, I might go to a football game maybe, but um, I wasn't out there like partying and stuff. I would go after school, get my work done, go and hoop, and then I have the rest of the night to enjoy myself. Um, so it wasn't, you know, I, I wouldn't say it was too hard because I liked what I was doing. Um, and, you know, the alternative was not really, you know, pleasing to me right. so uh you know I, I wouldn't say it was that difficult honestly it's, it's more just it's hard managing time and, and social life but you know you got to have priorities and sacrifice things as a competitor and somebody that's a leader on this team and also wants to be the best you embody the unselfishness it takes to be a good leader but has it been hard being unselfish throughout the years um just you know because you want to be the best you want to be good obviously because you put the work in mm. has it been hard being unselfish you know throughout the years or it's just something that you know you've been able to withstand uh it, it's been a little bit tough i would say a lot um this season um because obviously playing with eric and as you know as good as he is you know he's i mean he's amazing i think he's the most dominant player on the east coast um like no question about it um so he gets a lot of the headlines and stuff and you know there'd be headlines sometimes where it'd be like Dixon scores 30, Monroe chips in with 23, and I'd be like, ah, right. how do you chip in with 23? You know, right. I feel like that's a pretty good game. Um, or, like, if he had a bad game, the headline would be Dixon has a bad game as opposed to, you know, Monroe having a good game. So sometimes it was a little bit of a, I would say, it was a little bit of a confidence killer because, you know, I was always working hard, and I was like, why, you know, why can't I get some of the shine? But um, I kind of, you know, I kind of got used to it. it it's kind of just been inspiring. It's made me, you know, work harder because, you know, hopefully one day my name is, you know, one of the most well-known names in the world. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. When I look at you, your career, it's no coincidence to see you improve year after year, just because I know that you're dedicated to becoming the best you possible. And over your career, I've seen your jump shot improve and improve. Talk about all the behind the scenes work it took for you to become a better, you know, jump shooter and just any other parts of your game improving as well. Uh, well, it started, I mean, we lost the first round of districts my freshman year and, and that was one of the most sick feelings I've ever had. Um, so the next day I, I found the school trainer, um, Mr. Schmidt, and we lifted all summer. I, I probably gained like 10, 15 pounds going into my sophomore year. Um, I started like dunking. Um, and then my sophomore year, we lost in the first round of states and I was like, ah, we can't, I can't let that happen again. again. Um, so I started working on my shooting and I started working on developing my game, you know, more than I already was. Um, which like I said, was waking up and going into school in the morning um, working out two or three times a day, going to workouts, lifting weights, all that stuff, running. Um, so I, re I really just became engulfed in the game, and I, and I did as much as I could to improve, and, um, you know, it, it's helped me a lot. As your game evolved as well, your athleticism expanded and became, you became more versatile, maybe more to be able to do more things and impact the game in so many different ways. Talk to me about how your athleticism helped you expand your game and just helped you become even even more of a tough player to guard? Um, I've, I've always been a pass first kind of guy. So, you know, once I started lifting weights and running, and, you know, I, I was able to jump higher. I started getting faster. Um, I started getting stronger. So I was able to get to the basket more and make plays for guys. Um, I could collapse the defense, kick it out, hit guys for open shots. Um, I also, I was able to start dunking on people and finishing out the basket yeah. better. Um, so really, it really opened up everything for me, you know, especially because I wasn't a great shooter. So I was able to get to the basket and kind of make up for that weakness um, by getting more open shots for myself and getting to certain spots on the floor that I liked, um, which all was because I, you know, got a lot more athletic because I was working on my body. And, uh, you know, that, it's been a big part of my game. And, um, you know, it's just another stepping stone for, you know, where I want to get to. Too. Your ability to find lanes and gaps in the defense is second to none. You do a great job using your body and using your length to put you in a position to score. 
as well as you know surveying the court to find gaps and lanes to attack talk talk to us about you know how you position yourself to put you in a position to use your body and use your length to to score as well as how do you survey the court or you know look for certain you know um, gaps and lanes to attack because I feel like you do that so well um, so I like I said you know I know like I know all of our sets I know all of our plays um, I could run probably all of them from every spot and I could teach probably everyone in the program all of them um, so I know what spots are I know what shots are open I know what shots are open for certain guys um, I know there's certain plays where I come off a screen and I won't even look to shoot I know someone's open in the opposite corner um, and we've hit a, we've gotten a lot of open shots off that I know there's other plays where Darius might set a screen and pop out and I know he'll be wide open for a shot so I won't even look for my shot um, and then like I said it's just been it's just me being around the game a lot um, like I, I watch a lot of film right now I'm watching I'm re-watching the 1984 NBA Finals just because mm -hmm. it's Magic and Bird and like I, I like watching all that stuff so I watch a lot of basketball and you know you see certain things so when you get onto the court it just it kind of moves a little bit slower and, and you see the game a little bit differently um, because you you know you've seen it so many times before so that that really helped me just kind of being around the game watching a lot of old film and stuff like that. In the beginning your freshman and sophomore year you struggled a little bit offensively and, sh and shooting the ball, but you made improvements. Talk to me about your mental approach to, to just becoming better. How did you, you know, struggling and stuff like that, how did you, you know, take that approach mentally to say, okay, I'm going to improve next year? You know, what was that like? What was that process like as well? Uh, it, it made me tougher. You know, I, I, I get frustrated not being good at stuff. I, you know, I hate, I hate not being the best at, you know, whatever I'm doing. Um, so it, it annoyed me that I wasn't scoring a whole lot of points or I wasn't impacting the game like I wanted to. Um, so it just, I mean, it just made me work hard. And, you know, I didn't want to get down on myself. I didn't want to lose confidence. Um, so I just kept shooting. You know, I kept making the same kind of plays I was trying to make. Um, and it didn't really, you know, I never walked away and thinking like, damn, I should stop playing or stop right. trying this, trying that. I was, you know, I was like, you know what, it'll fall next time. You know, so I kept taking shots. And, um, you know, it was, it, it was a little bit hard. You know, I... I tweaked my shot a little bit going into this season so at the beginning of the year I was like airballing shots and stuff just because I was still getting used to shooting game speed except shots um, but I didn't let that phase me you know as the season went along I started hitting shots and I you know I started I became a much better shooter um, so it's just it's just staying positive and, and keeping your confidence. Over the years I've seen you just become more intense and show more emotion on the court and that's when I really started to say okay he's really a competitive guy because you show it out on the court talk to me about your competitive drive and just showing emotion on the court and when you're playing uh, I just you know I love playing basketball so you know that's when you really see me you know if you if you just see me in school I'm I'm friendly but I'm not I'm not super loud I'm not super obnoxious you know I just I go to my classes whatever um, but when I'm on the court you know I'll talk trash and you know, I'll get in your face I'll scream at you stuff like that so kind of you know that's like the real me I would say um, it brings out you know it's just that competitiveness I hate I hate losing um, you know like I said Kobe's my favorite player he's, he's probably one of the greatest competitors ever you know mm -hmm. he would kill you before he lost you right um, so I, I kind of embody that a little bit in the way he approached the game um, and it's just it's, it's helped me because you know the more intense you play the harder you play the greatest success you have what's your advice to the younger generation you know, that want to be good at both, want to be a good student, want to be a good athlete. What advice would you give to them that want to follow your steps and just become, you know, a really good person and a really good player and athlete as well? Um, you got to really focus on the little things, you know, like it's nice when you score 30 points, but um, that's not necessarily what coaches are looking at. You know, when coaches come and watch you play, they know you can play or else they wouldn't be there. You know, they want to see the little things. They want to see if you're a good teammate. They want to see if you have a good attitude, if you run back on defense when you make a bad play, you know, certain little things like that. Um, and to always work hard. Um, so, like, you can't sit around all day and play video games. You know, you got to get in the gym because while you're sitting around or sleeping, someone else That's is in the right. gym, yeah. you know, and they're, getting, they're either getting better than you or they're closing the gap between you and them. Um, and then in terms of just being a good person, it's just, I mean, you know, that's an easy thing to do. Just always be respectful to people. You know, that's, you know, who you know is going to get you a lot farther in life than what you know. Right. Um, because it gets to a certain point where you being able to solve for X only gets you so far, you know. Yeah. You have to be good to people and people have to like you. Because if people don't like you, then they're not going to want to be around you. And if right. they don't want to be around you, then they're not going to be around you. So you're not going to get that job. You're not going to get that spot on the team right. or whatever the case may be. Um, so it, it's really just making a conscious effort to always put your best foot forward and, and always do your best in things and always be good to people. I love that. You're very inspiring, bro, and I appreciate you on every level.
I gotta say that and thank you so much no for sending that, bro. Thank you.